I'm in the process of building a linear version of the Ryden RD6006 power supply. If you're not familiar with the videos, then the RD6006 is a switching front-end controller for power supplies. I've already built one with a switch mode back-end supply, and I'm in the process of building one that uses two of these transformers to provide the full 360 watts, but with a linear back-end supply. So I've uh, wound the first transformer, I'm in the process of finishing winding the second, so this should be done in the next few days. And uh, about a week ago one of the commenters asked if it was possible to uh, look at ways to determine the characteristics of an unknown transformer. So what I'm going to do in this video is give you some sort of very brief ways of investigating a transformer. It won't be in depth there's quite a lot of theory goes into transformers so I can't really cover it in just a, uh, a single video but if you find yourself with a transformer you know nothing about so we'll use this as an example uh, the first thing you can look at is what the turns ratio is and then you can calculate the number of turns on the uh, primary winding and that will be your starting point because you can then measure the wire thickness and you can calculate the maximum current that Y will be able to carry and you can go from there so uh, we'll start with that however there are some dangers in doing this you need to be very careful firstly um, it could be a step up transformer you might get thousands of volts coming out of some of the windings it might be a very low voltage transformer it could be just a switching transformer so you do need to try to determine uh, what's going on before you start applying power to it uh, but if you're fairly certain it's a power transformer and you can identify which are the secondaries, which are the primaries, then what you can do is some very uh, rough and ready testing. So what we'll do first is we'll determine the number of turns on the primary winding. So to do this, the easiest way is to put a single turn, an extra single turn uh, around the core. I then have this going to the uh, multimeter I've pulled out my VDB10, this is uh, an auto transformer so I can vary the voltage being fed into the primary. I'll come back to the scope and the clamp in a few minutes. The first thing we'll do though is calculate the number of turns. So I've got this turned down, I'll turn the power on and what I can start doing now is increasing the voltage on the transformer. We don't need to go very high initially so if I take it up to, for example, uh, 50 volts. Okay, so we have 50 volts going into the transformer. And as you can see, we've got 166 millivolts, which is RMS value, coming out of the transformer. You do need to use a, a multimeter that gives you true RMS for this, uh, because you won't be getting a pure sine wave through this. It'll be fairly close, but um, a true RMS meter will give you much better results. What we can now do is take a calculator and work out the number of turns on the primary of this transformer. So we know that a single turn will give us 167 uh, millivolts. So if I divide 50, which is the voltage we are feeding in, by 0.167 might as well use the extra decimal place. That equals, we're getting 298.3 turns. That's our calculated value. And if you did watch the previous videos, then you'll know that I wound uh, 300 turns on this core. I have since unwound one of them. You can see here that I've taken one of those turns off. Uh, so we've actually got 299 turns on this core and you can see that our calculated value is indeed very close to that and it comes well within the accuracy uh, that this is going to give us. So now we know the number of turns on the primary of this transformer we can measure the thickness of the wire and what that will then enable us to do is work out the maximum current that this winding can carry. Uh, what you then have to do is start looking at the core itself and if you measure the core and you know the material you can work out the uh, power handling capacity of the core. Now this only tells us the number of turns on the 
uh, primary it doesn't tell us what the voltage is that it's designed to run at now this of course will be determined to a large degree um, by the core so what we're looking at here is each cycle of the mains is causing uh, the flux within the core to increase now once we get to the point where on a particular main cycle the flux is going as high as it can or getting close to going as high as it can then the core will start to saturate in terms of its flux and the current in the winding will then start to rise extremely rapidly so instead of it going up uh, proportionally to the voltage uh, as the voltage ri uh, is increased you'll start getting very high current spikes on each cycle of the mains so what I've got here to demonstrate that is this is a current clamp it's attached to the, the scope, this is channel 1 of the scope so this is a CC65 and I've got it set to give uh, 1 millivolt on the scope for every 10 milliamps of current so basically it, it translates current uh, going through the wire that you clamped across uh, into a voltage that can be displayed on the scope uh, what I'll also do is move the uh, multimeter so we're monitoring the output voltage of the transformer and then I will attach channel 2 on the scope to this uh, extra winding that we put on now the reason I'm attaching this to the extra winding rather than one of the existing windings is because at this point we don't know what the voltage is are on the other windings. I don't want to blow the scope up. Uh, also I don't want to attach it to the primary of course because again that could blow the scope up as well. So this is uh, a very good way of getting an isolated um, uh, voltage signal going into the scope. Just be careful not to short this together because obviously that will give you a shorted turn and especially with a transformer like this it will give you a very high current. In fact uh, you could use this uh, transformer core to make quite a nice little spot welder and this is really the way you do it, you do a one or two turns and then bring the two ends together and that will uh, weld or destroy whatever they touch ok so we've now got this set up, I've got the current clamp turned on I'll turn the voltage right down, turn the power back on and as I now start to increase the voltage uh, if you recall from the previous videos I wound this for a nominal voltage on the primary of 120 volts I usually aim for about 10% margin um, as I explained in a previous video the nearer you can get to saturating the core without actually saturating it then the better performance you'll get out of the transformer because you're making maximum use of the core uh, cross-sectional area so we need something that's going to uh, allow us to get close to saturation at 120 volts uh, but we don't want it to be going into saturation until well over 120 volts so we'll start to increase the voltage in the primary you can see that the voltage on the secondary is starting to rise so that's across this uh, winding and this transformer uh, I calculated the number of turns on the secondary as being 24 volts at 120 volts um, on the primary bear in mind this is unloaded so I'll keep increasing the voltage notice on the scope that's on channel 2 we're getting the AC signal um, which is just the AC power um, coming out of the, uh, the transformer so that's the AC voltage and you can see it's showing uh, quite a nice sine wave and on the current clamp you can see that at the moment we're getting a very small signal almost nothing and that's what we expect we shouldn't be seeing large currents at this voltage because we're nowhere near saturating the core so I'll continue to increase the voltage and you can see that the peak current on the primary is starting to increase and also the um, voltage coming out of the secondary is also starting to increase just going to change the triggering on this so we can get a bit uh, more stable okay so you can see that the current on the primary is it's not a, a sine wave current and this is what we would expect that the rising edges 
are quite steep because this is really an inductor as far as the uh, supply is concerned. I'll carry on increasing the voltage. You can see that the current just continues to square up. The rising edges and falling edges of the current waveform are very steep and as I said that's to be expected. Currently at 107 volts we shouldn't be at saturation as yet. The other thing we're looking at here is this is the current don't forget and if we look at the supply you can see that at the moment we're at about 20 milliamps. Again that's a good indication that we're not close to saturation. When we get into the saturation zone then the current will start to increase very rapidly uh, as will the current shown on the display. So I'll keep increasing we're up to 120 volts and you can see now that we're starting to approach the range where the core is getting towards saturation. It's not saturating yet because the current's not rising steeply uh, but also note that uh, we're still getting a very good uh, sine wave out of our additional winding so there's nothing really to be seen on the actual AC voltage and this is the point I'm trying to make. Just putting a scope on the winding isn't going to tell you that much, it's the current flowing through the windings that's the issue. So we're at 120 volts, this is the design voltage. We're at 25 volts output, as I said this is unloaded. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll carry on increasing the voltage. Now I don't suggest that you do this on a transformer that you have unless you're extremely careful. This is a very robust transformer um, but it would be very easy to burn the transformer out if you're not very careful when you do this. So I'll go up and now if you watch the waveform on the scope you'll see that it, the current spikes, the current amplitude Will start to increase very rapidly from this point on. So 121 volts and we're at uh, 30 milliamps on the primary, 125 volts. You can see now how sharp and the amplitude of these uh, current spikes. So I'll turn the scale down on the scope. We're now going up towards 45-50 milliamps on the primary we're at 128 volts AC across the primary. We'll get up another couple of volts and you can see that now just the one volt, two volts makes a huge difference in the current on the primary. And as I said this is, uh, this is the current that we're looking at here on the scope. Uh, and you can see now that we are getting quite severe uh, spikes on each uh, half cycle of the mains. And that is a, a clear indication that we are starting to saturate the core and again the current now going into the transformer is starting to rise. In other words the transformer is starting to absorb a lot of energy. So I'll go up another couple of volts, I won't go too high, I don't want to burn the transformer out but notice now that the current is really starting to uh, shoot up. The winding in the core will be starting to overheat and this will just now get worse and worse uh, as the voltage gets higher. So looking at this, the, the point at which we really start to see the current uh, spike is about 130 volts. Um, this will be across 240 volts mains, there'll be two of these in series. So that means that we'll get a maximum allowable input voltage to the pair of 260 volts. The most we generally see on the mains in the UK is 245 to 250 so we are well within the safety range of use of this transformer so in other words the calculations that we made when we designed this transformer are correct at 120 volts we're right in the uh, correct point in terms of the saturation of the transformer We've got plenty of overhead before it starts to really saturate. We're getting the correct voltage out, so we know that our turns ratio was correct. And we know that we calculated the right number of turns for this particular core uh, on the primary. So we're not saturating the core, but we're getting close enough to make good use of the uh, power handling capability of this core. Okay, well hopefully you found that interesting. Any comments, please let me know. If you want me to show anything in addition to this, then uh, please um, leave a comment.